Hello, in this video, we're going to create a landscape based on a picture. Um, this is more of a height map and we're going to use it to our advantage. First thing you need to do whenever you work with this kind of images is check for dimensions of the image. So we're going to right click and make sure to see the properties uh, more precisely. We're going to need to see the dimensions that are in details of our object. So now in this case, it is 1200 by 1200. I'm quite lucky to have a really nice image which has this kind of proportions. So it's going to be way easier for me to work with it. Now I'm going to type in the length, so 1200 and the width, 1200 as well. I don't need any uh, width and uh, length segments, so I'm just going to type in one. At this moment, I'm not going to be using any kind of additional uh, modifiers, uh, at least for now. So I can just simply turn off the grid, go to the top view by pressing T, and we're going to open the folder that we have our uh, landscape picture in. Um, just simply grabbing it and dropping it onto our viewport is going to be enough to add it as a bitmap to our object itself. There's a chance that the method that I just shown you is not going to be working on your computer. And this really comes down to your 3ds Max settings. And for some reason, some people may have this problem where dragging and dropping this image onto uh, 3ds Max viewport is not going to work. But we've got the solution. What we're going to do first is we're going to click on the directory where our um, file is stored. So in this case, I'm just going to copy this directory. So it's going to come in handy later. Now I can just simply minimize this uh, folder and go to 3ds Max again. Press M or click on this icon to open Material Editor. There's a chance that you will actually open the compact Material Editor. Both are okay, but in this case, I prefer to use Slate Material Editor. Now, the next step is to add some kind of material to our scene. In older versions of 3ds Max, you're going to see standard, but uh, since uh, 2021, uh, this was scrapped and now we're using physical materials. Uh, so that's exactly what we're going to do. It doesn't really matter which slot we're going to be adding uh, this bitmap, so we're just going to add it uh, right away to the first one. Now select a uh, left click, uh, drag it and select the map. Go to general or if you've got Corona, go for Corona bitmap. But we're going to uh, go for the safer route and just simply select bitmap. In this case, you can see that uh, some kind of folder opens because now the bitmap is requesting a file. So we're going to paste our um, previously copied link. Now, since we've got this directory, we're, we can just simply click on this icon. What is going to be important at this moment is to select our plane, select also double click on our material and as assign it to our object. As you can see, nothing really happens. There's a chance that you're going to have real world map size uh, turned on. But in this case, we actually just need to click on uh, our bitmap and then move to show shaded material in viewport click on that icon and you should be able to see your object. But uh, well, if this still doesn't work, and for some reason, you can see that um, the bitmap is there, but it's uh, awfully small. And well, there's a thousand of copies of it. Uh, this pretty much means that your 3ds Max settings are incorrect, go to customize and set it to uh, max. But in this case, we're just going to click on real map size. So I hope that now you can continue and build with me. Our next step is going to be simply creating some kind of shapes or splines that are going to show us the outlines as this map is not really going to be useful as it is right now. We're going to simply make sure to create lines based on just simple drawing. So uh, the first thing is to left click on the area that we know we want our spline to um, be connected to. And we're just going to be uh, holding our left mouse button to further manipulate its shape. 
if you will go ahead and just continue building this shape with a left mouse button uh, being held, it is going to be extremely easy for you to draw lines just as I am right now. Sometimes you may not be even that precise because 3ds Max is actually not a CAD software. It's more of a artistic tool, so we don't need to be necessarily that precise with it. Okay, so uh, this is going to take us a while because we've got quite a uh, quite a lot of lines. So I think it's going to be best to simply uh, spit up the video and we're going to see each other in a few minutes. Nice and easy. So it took us a few minutes to really get to this point. Uh, what is going to be very helpful is to know that you can always go back and manipulate your uh, vertices a little bit further if needed uh, by simply using the most common um, uh, tools in 3ds Max. First, it's going to be your movement tool, rotation and scaling. By scaling the beziers that you've created, you're going to create a little bit sharper lines. By moving them, you can ease in the tension or just simply rotating it is going to make sure that your uh, shapes are going to be placed in the right way. As you can see, I've messed up this area a little bit. So we can go back to this point, try to move the beziers to better trace the image. And if needed, I can just go ahead and walk from one to another, scale it down a little bit, scale uh, this one or just move it a little bit. And going uh, step by step, I will be able uh, to get a little bit more precise outline. But in this case, it is not really the point of this video. So we're not going to be spending too much time on it. We're just going to make sure to uh, start using the right tools that we needed. What we are now missing is one final part that is going to be our zero point, because if we just start using terrain now, it's not going to really look that good. So for that, I'm going to scale this object and we're going to use this as an additional base. OK, and uh, now we can go for our selection presets and we're just going to go for shapes alone. By typing in 100 in the Z value for our first outline, we're going to be able to place it exactly where we need it. So I'm going to continue with that and go. I will select each and every element. Typically, when you will be loading CAD files uh, or any kind of outlines that were created in a different software, unfortunately, most of the time you will be forced to use this kind of a method where you have to manually uh, tell 3ds Max where those objects are supposed to be placed. So uh, this last part was actually on 500 centimeters. As you can see, this is going to create a rather um, big slope. So because we're working on a rather um, imaginary tutorial, I'm just going to scale this further to uh, make sure that my landscape is not going to be uh, too pointy. So we no longer need this image. So I'm going to go back to selection all select this uh, part and delete it. Now this looks quite fun. And we're going to now uh, go to our uh, creation panel, select compound objects. Um, and in this case, since this is just a simple shape, we need to go back to our creation panel from our geometry. And again, we're going to go to compound objects. And here we need to pick terrain. Terrain is very uh, simplistic. As you can see, it creates a very primitive type of mesh. So we can just simply uh, click on operand and start selecting each and every line to just allow 3ds Max to follow up with uh, the connections. As you can see, the connections are already creating a quite nice terrain. Unfortunately, it's not going to be very precise. It's going to be a rather primitive as most of the tools in 3ds Max from our um, uh, 
regular creation panel. So uh, to make sure that we do not have any problems with this mesh, we can also add a turbo smooth on top of that. So by increasing the iterations to a somewhat of a bigger number, we can just simply create this kind of land and we will be able to use it as a base to our 3D visual. Let's put our terrain into work. We will need some simple material on our object to avoid the default color to poke through. Drag and drop the material just like that. Next, I have pre-made a simple scatter object for this occasion. I will simply add the terrain as a distribute on object to allow scattering to take place. This simple technique will allow you to quickly prototype landscapes, pre-made mockups uh, for our presentations or, well, many more um, uses that you can come up with, but you know uh, how to use it on your own. If you want to learn more and dive deeper into 3D world, do not hesitate and visit our website, vizacademy.co.uk. You will be able to find much more tutorials, free models, and some textures. You can also enroll in our seven week course that will allow you to create beautiful visualizations just like those made by our students that you can see on your screen right now. Remember to like and subscribe and see you next time.